Hey everyone, Draco Magnus here for another episode, well, bonus episode, I keep fucking that up. Anyway, another bonus episode of Nine Hours, Nine Persons, Nine Doors. In the last bonus episode, we got the safe ending. And, uh, I'm not really sure if everyone died or not. Like, what happened is up to interpretation, I guess. On this episode, we are finally going to get the true and actual ending. So, I'm doing this with memories again, and I'll be cutting out all the stuff we've already seen. All the puzzles, all the dialogue we've already seen. This is basically just the introduction to welcome you guys, and I'll uh, meet you at our first door choice, just so you know how to get the true or coffin ending. Um, also, just to throw this out there immediately, to remind everyone, because I think I said it in the last, uh, well, not the last bonus episode, but, like, for the last ending, to get the true ending, you need to get the ending we just got first, and then do the choices that I'm going to show you we need to do. But without further ado, let's get the show on the road. I will see you when something new happens. Okay, here is our first choice of door, and we want to go for door number four. Right, right. Door number four it is. Not really much else I have to say unless something new comes up, which I... That'll be the case, so I guess I'll just cut this here. Uh, I'll leave it go. If I can speed past it, then y'all cut. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna cut this. Okay, this one isn't really important, but... I figured I would just do it. Hey, remember this? It's the Funyarapina. I'm sorry, the Funyarinpa. But, you know, just for laughs, even though we know it's a Funyarpina. Sorry, I said it wrong again. Funyarinpa. Even though we know it's a Funyarinpa, let's say it's a dog, just for laughs. Maybe a dog? See, you've got the head here, and these are the front paws, and these are the back paws. Junpei traced the black contours. See? Ah, I see it. I guess you've got a point. Santa, despite his constant aloofness, was clearly impressed. Junpei glanced over at Lotus. She looked stunned. How did you know? You're right. I didn't think you would have been able to guess that. For a brief moment, Junpei felt a swell of pride. So? Now we know what it's a picture of, but I don't see how that helps us. Lotus nodded and began to speak, and we're going back in the territory that we already know? Yep, alright then. Meet you when we're at, I guess, next door choice. Unless something new happens, in which case I'll bring you guys back early. Hey, look, something new. <clears throat> but Jumpy, you said you believe in curses. Come on, that's totally different. Okay, so let's say, hypothetically, that automatic writing isn't a total load. Oh, yep, speed time. Okay, never mind. It was just a slight difference. So, so far, we've not, we haven't gotten anything substantially different that's, like, wowing us. Aside from little bit text, but that's fine. I mean, I could have shown some other new stuff, technically. I mean, certain conversations where I answered one way, I could answer another way this time, but I decided, why bother? It was going to be just short bit text. But I thought maybe this one might be a little more different. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, just cause, let's see what happens when I say she was right. It wasn't pleasant, but she was right. There wasn't any way that the numbers worked out. If one group was four, the other group would always have a digital root that didn't match the door. When Snake spoke, his spoke, his voice was strained. Then, you're saying we got to decide who's going to stay behind? And yep, it doesn't change after. Okay, and here's our choice. We get to go through a new room. Door number seven. I... I think I'm going to go with door number seven. Okay, seven it is. Yeah. Alright then, that means Jun's gotta go through 8. Oh, and now he's gotta explain this, so let's just speed through- Oh wait, no. Never mind. What? Why? What? 
Oh, wait, I'm sorry, that was June. What? Why? What? Santa grimaced and muttered angrily to himself, but finally began to explain. If the six of us are going to keep going without leaving anyone behind, there are only three ways we can do it. Now you let me speed up? Nope. Plan A. Go through seven with three, five, eight. Whoops. Sorry about that. And go through eight with four, six, seven. Plan B. Go through seven with four, five, seven. And go through eight with three, six, eight. Probably want to do plan B, though, because seven wants to go through seven. Lotus wants to go through eight, and that's a really good thing. Because she's the only one that can really make progress in there for them. Plan C. Go through seven with three, six, seven. And go through eight with four, five, eight. Now can I speed through? Nope. And that's it. Those are the only options. Our only options, rather. In other words, three and four and seven and eight can never go through the same door. You get it now? As Santa finished, June looked over at Junpei, tears welling up at the corner of her eyes. Oh no! You're saying we aren't going to see each other again for a long time? Junpei felt just as June did. He wanted to be at her side through whatever trials they were preparing to face. But he knew if they were to survive, he had to swallow his feelings. In order for the six of them to move forward, he and June had to be separated. He looked at June. He was scared to lose her, but he swallowed, steeled his resolve, and did his best to smile. Hey, come on, you're making it sound like we're never going to see each other again. I don't know why they forced me to go through this when the dialogue is basically the same as the other door. Well, whatever. We gotta split up, but only for a while. This is just like when we went into the four and five doors, remember? We got split up then, too, but we all met back up. I'll bet seven and eight are just like that. You mean they're connected somewhere? Yeah, probably. Probably? She didn't sound very hopeful. It was seven that interjected. I'm sure they're going to connect somewhere. Why? What makes you think so? If they don't connect, neither team can get through door 9. In other words, the game would end right here. Zero's been on top of his shit so far. I don't think he'd blow it now. I'm damn sure that son of a bitch wants to have his fun as long as possible. He's not going to end this game until we get through the 9 door. June said nothing. The tears were gone, but her face... Her. The tears were gone, but her eyes were still sad they, as they looked at Junpei. He met them, and with what reassurance he could manage, he laid his hands gently on her shoulders. Everything's going to be fine. We're going to see each other again. I promise. June bit her lip and gave him an almost imperceptible nod. Yes. Promise? Her voice was barely above a whisper. Sina's voice shattered the moment. <sighs> you guys are done, right? He stretched and continued. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Clover and I will both go into separate rooms. I figure I'll take eight and Clover can take seven. Any problems with that, Clover? Clover looked away and was silent for a moment. Whatever. It was more of a dismissal than an agreement, but Santa didn't seem to care. Alright, we're ready to go then. Let's move. At Santa's command, the group split and head to their respective doors. And now that I think about it, this means we're going to hit two birds with one stone in this area. We'll probably learn of Seven's amnesia now. And Clover will tell us about the prosthetic arm now. Or we'll learn something else, maybe. Clover, Seven, and Junpei walk to door seven. Santa, Lotus, and June headed for door eight. For a long moment, they stood in front of the door. Seven took a deep breath. You guys ready? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let's go. The door had opened. A narrow hallway stretched out before them. Seven and Clover leapt through the door. The moment they did, their bracelets beeped. The detonators in the bracelets had been activated. Junpei stepped forward to follow them. But as he was about to step over the threshold, he stopped. 
He looked to his right, toward door eight. June stood there, a mirror image of Junpei. She turned and looked toward him. Their eyes met, and they nodded. The farewell took almost 1.5 seconds. And someone took a hold of Junpei's arms and hauled him bodily through the door. Seven. Seven did it. Let's be real. He heard the sound of the number door slam shut behind him. His bracelet gave a cold electronic beep. Only 81 seconds left! No time to waste, guys! Let's get moving! Seven led the way down the hall. Junpei and Clover followed him as fast as they could. After what seemed like far more than 81 seconds, they reached the end of the hall. To the left of the wooden door, they found the dead. There was no time to rest or catch their breath. All three slammed their hands in quick succession over the scanner panel on the dead. Still trying to catch his breath, Seven leaned heavily against the wall. It stopped. It stopped. <laughs> his smile seemed forced and a little crooked. This is the second time we've gone through one of these number doors, but whew, you never really get used to it. He stood up straight, no longer out of breath, and wiped some of the sweat from his head and neck. Clover smirked at him. Would have thought a guy your size would have had bigger balls than that. Oh, oh shit! What? What the hell did you just say? Say that again, I dare you! You. Have. No. Y you little. You wanna die? I'd like to see you try! You fucking brat! Alright, let's go! Hey, hey, calm down, guys. This isn't the time for. Uh. This. It's not gonna do us any good. Hmph. Ugh. Gosh. Junpei sighed. Sometimes he wondered if the doors and the puzzles were really the greatest challenge they faced. Wait here for a minute, alright? I'm gonna go see if there are any other doors. They didn't respond, but Junpei wasn't in the mood for conversation anyway. For a conversation, rather. First, he examined the inner part of the numbered door. It was, of course, shut tight. On the left was a single, short hallway that terminated almost immediately at a thick iron wall, and Junpei doubted the wall could be moved. Okay, I'm just curious to see where we are right now. Okay, so I'm guessing... Can I, like, tap on the map? No. Okay, so what's this one? That's the casino. Okay, so it's irrelevant. At last, he gave up and returned to Seven, who was tapping lightly on the wooden door. This door is the only option we got, right? Yeah, looks like it. Or we've got, rather. There was a metal plaque bolted above the door. It read, Operating Room. If it was to be believed, the room on the other side of this door was an operating room. Something about that made Junpei feel... nervous. Well, there's no point standing around. Two standing around, rather. Might as well go in and see what's waiting for us. Seven grabbed the brass knob and slowly opened the door. The creak of the hinge sounded like the groan of an old woman. A chill snaked its way down Junpei's spine. Quickly, he gathered what courage he could and took the first step into the room. Seven followed, with Clover right behind him. Part of the room just past the door was obscured by a screen. Clover's curiosity got the better of her, and she darted past Junpei to peer around the screen. Yeah! Her scream nearly blew out Junpei's eardrums. He and Seven ran towards Clover to see what had frightened her. They rounded the screen, and the cause of her outburst was immediately clear. Well, what the hell is this? Is... Is this a corpse? It looks more like a mannequin, but... Mm. It was something that looked kind of like a human, lying across some sort of bed. 
No, not at all. Not a bed. An operating table. The table's set on a rusty steel lift, and a cluster of bright operating lights shone down from the ceiling. Slowly they approached. As they got closer to the body, it became clear that it wasn't a body at all. Wow, shocker. What the hell? That's just a huge doll or something. A d doll? Clover did not look terribly comforted. Slowly she approached the operating table and looked as intently as possible from as far away as possible at the thing. Phew. Junpei could see her relax. You're right. It's only a doll. Man, it really scared me. She heaved a great sigh. Are you seriously trying to fight a little girl, Seven? For God's sake. Hey, guys, not again, okay? Seriously, knock it off. <laughs> Junpei sighed and shook his head. Anyway, it looks like he's got something. The two of you could stand to have a little more of heart. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm talking about a heart, huh? Oh, this? You mean on his chest? Yeah. It was set a little higher than normal for a human body, but the shape of the organ, there could be no doubt that it was a heart. Why would there be a heart in a doll? I don't think it's a doll. I think maybe it's like a medical mannequin or something? Or maybe it's got more personal uses? Seven's grid was more than a little perverted. <laughs> ah, Seven, you're alright. I like you. You're good people. You're fun. Little gets angry too easily, but still, Clover glared at him. Anyway, how about we take a look around this place? Let's go. Okay. Sure thing. Oh my, a lot of, lot of stuff. Lot, lot of stuff. And doors. Oh boy. All right, I guess we'll start with the mannequin. These dolls are really kind of creepy, you know. Hey, it says something here. John? You think that's this doll's name? Maybe. This thing is creepy. I wonder why it's on the bed. Hey, you might hurt John's feelings if you call him creepy. Hey. I wonder what this thing is. It says KG on the display. You think maybe it's a scale? Okay. An operating table. Do you think old operating tables look like this? I have no idea. Okay, so... Uh, damn it, I didn't want that! An old operating table, the medical mannequin's lying on it. I wanted to click that. A white cloth. Thank you for your insightful words of wisdom, Junpei. Good lord, look at all these. That's a lot of surgery stuff. There's some scapels, a few pair of forceps, a couple syringes. All of it's too rusty to be useful, though. Hey, there's a scapel here that looks new. Where? That? Oh, hmm. A scapel that's not rusty. Seems like it was put here for a reason, huh? Think it's telling us to cut something? Yeah, I do. Well, if I had to guess, there's that white cloth back there. An internal organ, specifically a lung. A medical mannequin with its guts showing. Ew. Gross. Hey, Junpei. There's a slit in this thing's chest. Yeah, sure is. There's something in there. Maybe we can get it out. Ugh. Damn it! This thing, thing won't budge. It's stuck. Well, I guess you can't use force on this one, then. We need something small that can fit into that little hole. Like a... I don't know. Scapel? Something can fit into those cracks. Maybe we can take it out. Let's take out some of the internal organs. Well... 
Oh, never mind. It's just the same thing again. Okay.